Welcome to day 34 of our 40-day encounter with God, getting to know God personally, getting to know God's heart and the way that he does things, the way that he defends us, getting to know the justice of God, the grace of God, the favor of God, getting to know God intimately, in the sanctuary of our daily devotionals, in our quiet time, that is where we will find God, mostly. Because God is in many places at all times, but in our quiet time, that is where we will experience God, His love, how he fills us, how he completes us. And we are approaching the end of our 40 days and the study today is beautiful, is one of my favorite Bible verses and I am so happy that we have had this time together. If you're new here, I welcome you. And if you have been with us for 33 days, I thank you for having trusted me to lead you in this study. Let us pray. Lord God in heaven, I thank you and I bless you, my God. My Lord God, you're beautiful. You are wonderful. My Father, you are powerful. But mostly, my God, you are faithful and loving and gracious, my God. My Lord God, how you love your children, how you love us, is something that I cannot even wrap my head around it, my Father. We can't understand your love. The love that volunteered to hang from a cross, to, to have been crucified, my Father, to have shed your blood for each and every one of us, my Father. For the ones that did not know you, for the ones that didn't believe you, for the ones that were your enemies, for the ones that were with you and against you, my God, for all of us, my Father. And yet, my God, you gave your life, and for that we say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with me today as I impart the message of day 34. I will open my mouth and Thank you that you will fill it with your words. We move and we breathe for you, for your glory, Lord. Thank you, my Father. We are so grateful, so thankful, so blessed for your love and your presence in our lives. Open the gates of paradise, O God. Let us see the splendor of your temple. The heavenly dwellings are upon us as children of the Most High God. And we have access to the Holy of Holies with our prayers, with our actions, with our words, which have power and have life. The doors behind you are closed to the unbelievers. But for those who believe there is an open heaven and a promise of paradise, heaven on earth, heaven to come, eternal life, eternal glory with our King. This is the wonderful message that is being spread everywhere, powerfully changing hearts throughout the earth just like it changed me and it has changed you. Every blessing of the good news bears the fruit of eternal life. 
as we experience the reality of God's grace. Beloved, what a wonderful promise. And I pray that you would walk in the ways of true righteousness, pleasing God in every good thing that you do. The goal is for all of us to become fruit-bearing branches as we attach more and more to the vine as we adore the vine dresser. And we attach to his life and we pray that we can mature in the rich experience of knowing God in all of his fullness, yielding, yielding, yielding to him. We prepare our hearts this day, my God. Receive the reward of your suffering. We are your reward. We are the hope of heaven. I wrote this poem for this day and for this devotional. For you, my God, for your glory. I wrote it out of love and gratefulness Because, Lord God, we cannot do anything, my Father, without you, O oh God, in our lives. And I just give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. My Father, the awe of your love and of your presence, my Father, We cannot even express the love that we feel for you, my Father, the adoration, my God. How we have been, my Father, experiencing this love and this grace that is beyond our comprehension, God. Hallelujah, my Father, for you reign. And we say thank you that we are the hope of heaven. I pray that we always do and say and behave in a way, in a matter that pleases you, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Welcome once again to day 34 of our 40-day encounter with God. The name of our study today is I Am the Vine. And our Bible verse for today's devotional is found in the message translation in John chapter 15, verses five and verses 11 through 12. I am the vine, you are the branches. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command, love one another the way I love you. There is a novelist by the name of Anna Quindland, and she offers some profound soul advice uh, written for college graduates on the day of their graduation. And it reads, people don't talk about the soul very much anymore. It's so much easier to write a resume than to craft a spirit. But a resume is cold comfort on a winter night or when you're sad or broke or lonely or when you've gotten back the chest x-ray and it doesn't look good. 
Get a life in which you are not alone. And remember that love is not leisure, it is work. Each time I look at my diploma, I remember that I am still a student, still learning every day how to be human. Consider the li lilies of the field, look at the fuzz on a baby's ear. The classroom is everywhere. The exam comes at the very end. In another place, in a much earlier time, another graduation ceremony took place. Story time was over. The teacher had done his job. His assignment was almost finished. But first, Jesus summarized the material and offered some final instructions. For three years, Jesus had poured his life into his disciples, his chosen, his dirty dozen, who had followed him day and night. They'd witnessed miracles. They had escaped death. They had tasted victory. And everywhere they walked with Jesus, they felt the touch of heaven. But then Jesus gathered his beloved men into the upper room where they would share a final meal. Jesus had more to offer. What he really wanted to give them was soul food. Once the betraying disciple Judas Iscariot had left, Jesus began telling his disciples about a new command, love one another in the same way I loved you. You love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples, when they see the love that you have for each other. John 13, 34. But the disciples interrupted him by wanting to know where he planned to go and why they could not go with him. They still didn't get it. Jesus was going to die, and when he did, it would be extremely important that they remembered and fulfilled his new command. Seeing their need for comfort and explanation, Jesus answered their questions as plainly as he could. He would not leave them alone. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit, his presence in every believer would come, but only if he left. Jesus was thinking of them, but they were thinking only of themselves. Grief often does that to us for a reason. They left that place, but Jesus continued teaching. Then he compared himself to a vine, and his disciples were the branches. As long as the branches were attached to the vine, they would bear fruit. If cut off, they would end up as a dead wood. I've loved you the way my father has loved me, Jesus added. Make yourselves at home in my love. And then Jesus repeated the new command, love one another. John 15, 9. Why had he spent three years teaching and demonstrating love to them? because he knew it was the secret to joy. Unless they stayed connected to the vine, they could not love. And if they did not love, they would graduate with no joy. It was not a joy of their making. It was the joy of Jesus himself. As a mother experiences agony during childbirth, the disciples would experience the pain and grief of Jesus' death. But Jesus knew that after his resurrection and the coming of the Holy Spirit, his disciples would be empowered to love like never before. What would replace that grief? His joy, the joy of obedience, of loving others and following him. Jesus was not asking them to revert to a faith built on keeping the law. A diploma from the School of Law Keeping is, as Anna Quindlen said, cold comfort on a winter night, or when you're sad or broke or lonely, or when you've gotten back that x-ray and it doesn't look so good. A diploma from the School of the Law Keeping will keep count for nothing when the final test is given at the end of our lives. Laws simply point out our need. 
but Jesus' new commandment of love goes beyond the school of law. It meets our deepest needs. Jesus' new commandment involves, once again, the principle of continual relationship. Jesus wants all people to enjoy the same kind of love connection he has experienced with his Father. Paul spoke about this love years later when, as an imprisoned follower of Christ, he pointed out the relationship of, of the vine to its branches. The result of that unbroken connection is fruit. The fruit of the Spirit, God's Spirit, actively at work in us is love, joy, peace. Only one who has attached to the true vine could understand the origin of that joy. Jesus' graduation address to his disciples ended, but for them it was only the beginning. He did not just leave them with temporary joy. The memories of three wonderful years attending the school of Jesus. He then offered them an honorary doctorate degree of complete joy. Joy that was perfect, mature, and rooted in him. Because Jesus loved them, they could love each other. Because they loved each other, others could see Jesus. When others see Jesus, they represent joy. When others represent joy, they love too. It is not something they will do in between jobs, children, or Monday night football. Love involves work. But even the work itself of staying connected to the vine is a joy. And in time, the disciples and we with them come to understand that in God's school of loving, class is never out. His spirit is always teaching, always giving, always loving. And even for the ones who hated school, that truth brings great comfort and joy. The personal truth for our teaching today is God is the only one who can turn grief to real joy. And the personal question today is how are you gauging your joy today? How are you expressing your love and your joy to others? How are you loving others? How are you attracting others to your love and to your joy? Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much that you are the vine, my Father, and we are the branches. Thank you so much because it is a beautiful depiction, my Father, that as we are connected to you, we are nourished, my Father. We are nourished spiritually. We are learning from you, my God. We are receiving from you that holy spiritual food that only comes by being attached to you, the vine. The vine dresser loves us so incredibly that he is always providing the nourishment that we need, your nourishment, Father. The nourishment of the water and the food that we will never hunger or thirst after we taste from you, my God. Taste and see that the Lord is good, my Lord, my God. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you for your spirit and for your comfort, my Father, every day, my God. Thank you, my Father, that we are willing to attend the school of love the rest of our lives if it means that you will be our teacher my god you are the best teacher ever you are the best father ever my god personally i love the way that you have taught me i love the lessons that i have learned from you my father they have been life lessons you have shown me one principle at a time how to be 
the Christian that you died for me to be, my Father. And I pray that for each one of my subscribers today. I pray that for each one of the people listening to this audio that you will become the Christian, the child, the representative, the love provider that Jesus died for you to be, the healer, because this world needs healing. And we thank you, O oh God, that you show us how to heal others with our love. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you for each person listening to this audio. I pray that you will bless them in a mighty way, my God. That the 40 days that they have invested in this devotional, every single day learning about you, my God, getting closer to you, God, that you will reward them, that you will prosper them as their soul prospers, that you will prosper their mind, my God, their soul, their, their wills, their emotions, my Father. My God, that you will prosper every area of their lives and that you will give them wisdom, my Father. And from wisdom comes prosperity, my God, as we see in the life of King Solomon, my Father. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, O oh God, for these past 34 days, sorry, these past 33 days, and thank you for this 34th day. We look forward to the five days remaining, my Father. Thank you, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, your Son, and thank you, holy, holy, sweet, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen.